Hey there! I have an exciting theme today. I'm really passionate and um, we're going to talk about brain chemistry and eating disorders. So I want actually to examine with you and share with you how neurotransmitters actually affect things like cravings, emotional eating and some eating disorders as well. How does it work and what causes it and of course what can we do? Join me today for my really amazing video where I share something I'm really passionate about. My name is Andrea Caprio and I'm glad to be here helping you to find out a little bit deeper how you can actually overcome your health issues, your weight issues or emotional eating problems you might have. So let's get talking about brain chemistry and eating disorders. So I want to start off with a little quiz. I like quizzes by the way. So ready, set, go. For each answer you say yes, right? Just give yourself a point. So do you eat sugary or sal salty carb rich foods when you are feeling worried or fearful, feeling stressed and burned out, want relaxation and calming, obsessive so thoughts or behavior, excessive self-criticism, afternoon or evening cravings for carbs, lack of drive and low motivation, craving carbs or coffee for energy, craving, crying or tearing up easily, craving a reward or numbing treat, intense cravings for sweets or lightheaded if meals are missed. So give me an idea and please do share that in the comments here how many answers did you give that were yes or maybe or yes maybe or big yes hell yes right so i guess most of us have a couple of maybe one maybe two maybe several right but what is important here is all these questions are actually part of a questionnaire i do normally with my clients which is very extensive so this is like uh, five percent of the questions i ask them to find out which are actually the neurotransmitters, the areas in our brain, by the way, um, that are affected and lead to cravings or disordered eating or so. So it's really important now that you ask yourself, okay, which are the neurotransmitters that are messing up with my eating and what to do, right? And that's, I guess, what you are asking now, right? Um, or you maybe have no idea what neurotransmitters are, okay? So I will share all these things with you and uh, share a little bit on what to do as well. So first of all, neurotransmitters, there are chemical messengers, actually part of your brain chemistry that tell your body what to do, basically how to feel, how to react, what to manifest and so on. And they transmit actually information between neuron cells and so on. So we have about 50, more or less 50 known neurotransmitters. There's still a lot of research into it. And um, each of them, as I say, have different functions. I just want to quickly share uh, some with you. By the way, if you are um, wanting to find out a little bit more about that, I have a blog post. Uh, the link will be in the comment or the description. So you can check it out to get you know, more of the details, maybe read it again or so. So check out the links in the comment. And of course, as usual, please remember always to share um, this video with friends who might maybe need it and uh, maybe give me a like or a comment or if you have a question as well and of course subscribe as well. So now some of the neurotransmitters that are more essential or more uh, something we look at in terms of eating and uh, cravings and emotional eating and so are uh, dopamine, serotonin, taurine as well, GABA is quite a big one, then neuroepinephrine and epinephrine as well, histamines, glutamine and some others of course and I don't want to rattle them down now but um, I want to explain to you uh, using just a couple of samples how that can affect your cravings but also your mood actually and that of course is very important to understand that very often depending on the mood we are at the feelings we have we then have more cravings right because that's in the end what we are looking here is to help you decrease your cravings so you can eat better in a better way have better healthy uh, eating habits and lifestyle habits so you can maybe lose weight or improve your health right so first of all to know which neurotransmitters are low we have certain type of questions and depending how we answer them 
we know, okay, it's likely that you are low on this neurotransmitter and that. So to illustrate that, for example, when, and when we obviously address them, then we can improve it. Right, so if let's say you are low on GABA, that means that you are normally anxious and stressed and stress eat. And when you are normal on GABA, your levels of GABA are normal, then you're normally calm, relaxed and have less cravings or eat less stress, right? Serotonin, when you're low in serotonin, you are more somebody who's depressed or anxious and eats for happiness. And of course, when your serotonin is good, right, you are happy and content. The, then you have catecholamines, I always struggle to pronounce that one, which normally encompasses your dopamine, epinephrine, no, no, norepinephrine. And that usually is, um, when you're low in those, is that you're tired and unfocused and you eat to get more energy. And of course, once everything is good, you're energetic, alert and focused, right? Um, endorph endorphins as well can be low and then you want usually a reward or um, you feel sad and you eat for comfort and of course you feel rewarded and comfort if all is good and then a low blood sugar is something I want to add here. It is not a neurotransmitter but it is um, regulated by many bodily functions but also a lot by different neurotransmitters, right? And when your blood sugar is low, that can lead to irritability and shakiness. And then you obviously eat to feel grounded and that makes you feel grounded and stable, right? So that is to illustrate you how neurotransmitters work. So when they are too low and imbalanced, then it leads to a certain type of feeling. And um, then of course, you know, can lead to you eating or some have coffee, some others do drugs or alcohol or whatever it is, right? But when the neurotransmitters are out of balance, that is when normally it leads to uh, an action that we do. And usually it's unfortunately an unhealthy action um, that we do to balance them. And by the way, usually unhealthy action might balance them in the short term but not in the long term and that's often when you see that people you know eat a lot or eat a lot of carbs or whatever and then you know obviously it leads to all kind of issues right so now how do you find out which of the neurotransmitters uh, are out of balance or is out of balance so I have, and working with my clients, we've developed, and by the way, with the help of um, you know some amazing people, uh, Trudy Scott is, by the way, a really great person. She has a really great book. I just want to share this. Uh, shout out to Trudy Scott. Uh, I have a lot of my wisdom here of this book. I can highly recommend it. Um, in terms of you know having a questionnaire, um, which helps actually to find out which of those uh, neurotransmitters might be low. Now. It's always a trial and error approach, I want to say that. So either it needs to be very clear what it is, or it um, might be that it's this and this, or this or this, or it depends. So we, we need to play around a little bit with this. But if you're interested, by the way, to you know get more, um, please do contact me. This is something we do working with our clients, and this is something that makes it easier, right? We all um, struggle to be healthy or eat healthy or lose weight, but Getting your neurotransmitters sorted out makes it easier to lose weight, for example, because you're not anymore having those cravings because of your neurotransmitter imbalance. And that's maybe the important part here to understand. So, right, now to understand, for example, you know, when you're low in GABA um, is something when you feel worried and fearful, when you have maybe panic attacks, when you have stiff, intense muscles, feeling stressed and burnt out and craving carbs, alcohol or drugs for relaxation and, and calming. And my list, my, my questionnaire has probably for each of these 20, around 20, some, sometimes 30 or so questions to really dive in what is it that's, you know, um, low so we can work on it in a very direct way. And I'll tell you obviously later a little bit more about how. Low serotonin, for example, can lead to anxiety, obsessive thoughts or behaviors. Perfectionism is a very good sign on that one or very controlling. Digestive issues as well, insomnia or disturbed sleep, and often the afternoon or evening cravings for carbs. Um, so you see there are different areas. So you have um, 
you know, the others. And I don't want to rattle them down now here. That's not the idea. Please check out my blog post. The link is in the comments to give you more an idea on these different things. But again, I share with you a few questions. We really need to dive deeper into finding out and addressing it properly. If you are not really finding out the right, really the right uh, neurotransmitter that's in balance you, and, and you want to address it in the wrong way, right, it will not balance itself. So you really want um, to find out the right thing. Remember to check out the blog for a little bit more information. But now you're asking probably, how do I balance my brain chemistry and my uh, neurotransmitters to overcome maybe cravings, emotional eating or any eating disorders or so. So once we know actually which one uh, it is, I want to share a few tips what can happen. Now, I will not share tips just to do, uh, which normally I, by the way, do because it's so difficult to find out which neurotransmitter it is, right? So I don't want to do that. Again, please, if you're interested, I would love to help you with this and let's hop on a call. Um, the link uh, to book that is, by the way, here in the, in the comments or the description, so you can find that out. So low blood sugar may cause cravings for sugar when you haven't eaten in a while. And as simple as putting glutamine, the supplement glutamine on your tongue, can stop immediately the cravings for the sugar. Isn't that amazing? And that has happened, by the way. I mean, it's not something I'm making up here. So if you, and, and that's why it's so important to find the right neurotransmitter. So if you have, you know, a deficiency on that, just adding glutamine will solve the problem. Isn't it amazing? Now, um, in the other hand, for example, if stress eating is likely caused by low GABA, you might elevate it by supplementing it with GABA. If eating sugar or carbs to feel happy, especially in the afternoon, then it might be that you're low in serotonin and tryptophan might elevate the anxiety and boost your mood. The reasons you eat sugar to get an energy boost is most likely due to low catecholamines. And tyrosine is here the one who stops the cravings and gives you the mood boost and the energy. And then, of course, if you are an emotional eater and you eat comf comfort, it might be that you're low in endorphins and DPA might help you to stop the comfort eating and gives you a mood boost. So this is to illustrate how strong and, and how um, important it is, you know, to address those um, neurotransmitted imbalances. And most of it, you address them, by the way, through amino acids. Amino acids are part, our building blocks of our protein. Unfortunately, just eating protein is not enough. You need, um, if you have a severe imbalance, you need really to supplement. You can do that with some uh, foods a little bit more, but in general, I would recommend supplements. And again, something I would work uh, with my clients together. But also remember, if before taking any supplements, you always want to check with your doctor if they're right, because they can cause harm as well if they're not you know, the right thing. Um, so very important to find the right amino acid to help you balance your neurotransmitter and also additionally to that, keep in mind that it's super important to not only just pop a pill and a supplement and everything is sorted, but also you still need to eat right. Like I mentioned, you know, eat enough protein, for example, is something I always say. Uh, make sure, you know, you have the right lifestyle, like enough sleep, stress management, exercise, you know, all these things are important and all this helps also your neurotransmitters, right? Things like meditation can help your serotonin levels, for example, right? So what if you could overcome your cravings as easy as just putting glutamine onto your tongue? Or, you know, let's say if blood sugar is the issue and you know, you know, by addressing it, you get a guaranteed result, right? Or really find out what neurotransmitters you're low in, right? How would that be for you? And I guess the answer is, oh, wow, I would love that, right? You probably are here, are still listening to me and thank you, by the way, because you've been struggling with, um, you know, maybe your weight issues or whatever it is. So 
If you are interested really to get to the cause of it, first of all, check out my blog post, but also please feel free to book me on a um, consultation. It's, I call them my food freedom consultation, helping you to overcome, you know, like issues around food or so with easy steps. Um, either I can give them to you directly or maybe you will want to discuss working together so I can, you know, give you um, part of our service is, you know, we have uh, very thorough health assessment forms and part of them are having, you know, like questionnaires like this one, but obviously deeper to help our clients to find and get to their root cause and address it. And then from there, it's so much easier to overcome your cravings, things you struggled forever and lose weight and um, get, you know, to solve your health issues. So I hope you liked this and enjoyed it and found it useful. I'm really passionate. I think you know that. Um, so please remember to share it with your friends, who those who obviously might benefit from it, or give me a like or a comment, or you know if you have of course any questions, please feel free to do so. And as usual, subscribe to my channel if you like that. Thank you so much. My name is Andrea Caprio, and until next time, bye bye.